iPredict works by gathering the knowledge of its 5,000 plus traders. If a stock has a price of 57 cents, that means the market thinks that event has a 57% chance of happening. If you agree, you buy. If you disagree, you short. And if you're right, you make money. Kia ora, good evening New Zealand. This is day 12 until the country goes to the polls. Welcome to iPredict Election 2011, the most accurate source of political and economic information in New Zealand broadcasting. Our three predictions tonight. Prediction one, the iPredict market is going against the tide of mainstream media landline polls, suggesting John Key will have a majority government, by predicting only a 30% probability that the National Party will have 50% or more of the vote. Who can the National Party form a coalition with if they don't win outright? Prediction two, after appearing on this show last week, Winston Peters surged to almost 40% probability of entering Parliament and the market has increased his party vote to 4.7%. Electoral zombieism or the greatest comeback since Lazarus? Prediction three, with stock open on the next leader of the Labour Party, who will be the leader of the opposition if Phil fails at the election? To dissect these predictions, let me introduce tonight's panel. He was the first first possible Māori leader of the Labour Party before Shane Jones took that title and dropped it, former Labour Party MP and current talkback radio host John Tamahiri. And he is the political columnist for the National Business Review, moral shepherd of the right wing, Matthew Hooten. Welcome to you both. We'll also wrap the show with a final prediction, but let's kick things off with tonight's first market prediction. At only a 30% probability that National will gain 50% or more party vote, who can National form of government with? Uh, John, with United Future in trouble, ACT in trouble, and the Māori Party possibly vote split by mana, will John Key be Mr No Mates on election night? Uh, he will need to coalesce with somebody. Mm -hmm. um, ACT is not going to get the numbers uh, to push him across the line mm -hmm. as they did last time. Uh, so so first, let's get this right. It won't be a first past the post result for okay. John. Right. He'll need to coalesce with somebody. N next question is, um, will it be a bloodbath for Labour as it was for National in 2002? Mm -hmm. No, it won't. You don't think the meltdown's going to happen? I don't think it's going to melt. The meltdown will happen. Mm -hmm. I think a Labour will hold to high 20s, uh, early 30s. Okay. And, okay. and so I think, I think, I think they'll re re retain that. that. That still means, though, that uh, Key looks like, like, like he'll, he'll go forward. The Māori Party will definitely hold three really? votes. Which uh, seats? Which seats? They'll hold, well, Tamaki Makoto's in. Yep. Wairiki is in. Uh, really? Uh, well, Okay. Labor, uh, well, Māori Party leads there, mm -hmm. 58 to 23. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Māori Party leads in Tamaki Makaurau, okay. 58 to 23 again. Okay. Uh, to Tai Haururu, Tariana Turiya's seat, mm -hmm. same numbers. Sure. So, so two weeks out of 12 days out from the election, uh, those three are hold positions. Mm -hmm. And there's a strong possibility they may, may actually hold to Tai Tonga as well. Okay. Now, the Mana Party, there's no doubt Tai Tokirau will go to Huni Harawera. Yep. And there's a strong possibility in recent surges in mm -hmm. polls that they could actually get a second MP. Mm -hmm. uh, and depending on what happens with that 14 to 15 percent vote that is very much so led by uh, the polls coming mm -hmm. into that last week, that they might end up with more. We don't right. know. So, so you've got a game on on that side of it. But, but Key doesn't have a lot of people on the right mm. uh, to help him. Uh, and that might be w w where it goes. Now, then comes New Zealand first for the surge. Sure. And uh, you never know because you can't trust what Winston Peters says, so you never know what's going to happen after the election, right. you see. But, um, but you've got that bugger you vote, haven't you, Matthew, out there that's, that's starting to look for a home, and that's, uh, that's I don't know it where could, it's going to it crystallise. Right. Matthew, it's November 27th. The Epsom Tea Party has worked, and ACT hold the balance of power with three MPs. John Key rings Russell Norman and says, Don wants me to sell all of the power companies. If I go into coalition with the Greens, we can keep 51% of them. It's time for the Greens to step up and be in coalition or be blamed forever for losing control of New Zealand's energy supply. What does Russell Norman do? Something um, like that could happen. I think the first thing Russell Norman should do is take a deep breath and have a cup of tea <laughs> if he gets a call like that. I mean... It's possible National gets 50% of the vote. Do you think the Epson Tea Party strategy um, has worked? I think it will work. So it I will? think then um, ACT will get in with one, two or three MPs, mm. same as MANA, but just like MANA on the left. ACT can't ever hold the balance of power because it has no choice but to support National. Un unless, so, unless, unless they have the three in it, that's what John Key needs. Yeah, yeah, sure, that's what he might need. But in the end, John Key has huge leverage with ACT because he can say, oh, if you don't like what I'm dictating to you, mm -hmm. go and talk to Phil Goff at Labour. So they don't ever have leverage. So 
I think the scenario you suggest... But it could be the kingmaker. He could be the kingmaker. Brash could be the kingmaker. Well, no, because he's he doesn't have any choice. You're only a kingmaker in this political system if you're in the middle. If you like Winston Peters, or as the Greens are positioning yourself, where you've given yourself a choice. Um, Brash just has to do, ultimately, whatever John Key tells him to do. I mean, he can kick yeah. up a fuss, but that's all. If, 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 if Brash is the, is the way into the, the government benches, he does have that power. He's trying to downplay the Brash element, isn't he? Uh, yeah, to an extent. But here's what John Key, uh, he wants three terms. They all want three, yeah, if yeah. not four. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so 2011 and 2014, he's got to be very careful of not being seen as a right-wing Neanderthal. Sure. Uh, and so, so, and he's a centrist because mm. he wants three, mm. four terms. So he won't be doing anything uh, naughty like that. And he'll, he'll need to play off something on his left. Mm. He will have a liaison with the Māori Party. Mm -hmm. He's already said that. Yeah. Mm. So a uh, vote for them is a vote for uh, being in government. Mm. Uh, uh, but, but, but let's keep it very clear. He wants a third term. And I tell you what, the storm clouds on both sides of the Atlantic a building, are building and building. Yep. All hell's going to break loose in yep. the next three years. Mm. It's going to be very interesting to see how he does his uh, quantitative easing plus his oh, austerity. Huge, sure, huge, sure, yeah. huge yeah, yeah, pressure yeah, comes yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the, the government says it's going to have no increases in social spending mm. between now and the next election. Well, no, if, no. If, if you believe that, mm. you know, you're dreaming, of course the political pressure will come on and the government will increase um, spending. And we'll borrow, um, won't they? And we'll borrow? increase borrowing. Okay. Um, he'll have to give something to the Maori Party mm. and I think the Greens will be in that uh, arrangement in some we way. We are not going to be in surplus by 2014, are we? Seriously? For, for two no reasons, but no. because of that, the fact of the matter is that relies upon the government demonstrating fiscal rectitude that Bill English and John Key have never demonstrated. Right. I mean, they are people who spend 20 million bucks at every cabinet meeting. Um, so I doubt that's that's going to happen. Question, Plus, question of, I don't see the economy is going to grow as fast as the Treasury Quick, quick says. question of both of you. Do either of you think a majority government is a good thing for New Zealand democracy? I mean, if, if he did get over 50%, would that be a good thing? No, I, no, I don't think it will be. Well, uh, well it, it would mean that if he um, didn't do uh, um, coalition deals on the other side, even though he didn't need mm. them, um, it will mean that he'll, he will end his term this 11, 14 right, period. Right. Because uh, the, whatever happens, the whole of the responsibility for what happens will be shooted straight home to one person. A majority government's not good for New Zealand. D um, democracy. Well, I, think, I think he's going to bring in other parties yep. anyway, but I think it would be quite good you do? Um, just once for a government especially in these times, to be fully accountable and have to be able to take some choices on difficult issues without having to always mm. trade off. New Zealand has stagnated since 1996. The Helen Clark government was always a minority government, as she used to point out. They didn't do much. They didn't reverse some of the things they said they were opposed to. The John Key government has done very, very little. Um, I, I think it would be useful in these difficult times for a national leader, small n, national mm. leader, to have that accountability and that power to lead the us through these times. The comeback, of course, to that is the last three years we've seen this government ram through more uh, legislation under urgency. They've misused urgency as often uh, as they like. Surely yeah. they've got that kind of power to just ram legislation through. Look, it's, Would the, you really it's, want that? It's, it's all been um, legislation um, that's fiddling at the edges. Um, a lot of it, a lot of yeah, okay, but a lot of it, a lot of it, serious. it's not economic strategy legislation. A lot of that was um, Simon Powell's desire to pass more pieces of legislation no, than anyone, anyone else anyone in the else. history of bloody yeah, politics. But, but that's not it. That's not um, an important thing in terms of economic strategy. He wants to downplay the, the national winning fifty percent. It 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 would spook voters, wouldn't it? It does. And um, if you recall, uh, two thousand and two, a uh, clerk was trading fifty four percent ahead. That's right, uh, that's and it right. And it was consistent. The, the, the market was through the roof. Employment was down. All the portents for a first-past-the-post winner to be rewarded. Yep. Uh, that did not occur. She got 41% on right. the day. That's right. right. And then votes broke to New Zealand mm, First, mm, mm. Uh, United Future, and the Greens. Mm. And so, so Kiwi voters said, no, no, I'm going to vote for the Greens. I'm going to vote for the United Future, and I'll vote for New Zealand First to make her honest. And I think that's what MNP is designed to do. With, with, with the market predicting a 30% probability of national gaining 50% or over, would you buy because national will be a majority government or short because they will need coalition short. partners? Short. You've said, you've come out and claimed they will take 50%. You're buying. Uh, I think there's a good chance they will. So I really? think at 30 cents it probably is a buy. It's a buy. Um, because you'd make good profits on that if it happens. But this, um, if Labour can spin this secret tape scandal, mm, which mm. I think at heart is absolute nonsense, but it can be made to sound do you know sinister what, do you know, and mysterious. Do you know what's on the tape? No, I don't know what's on the tape. Do you tape. know what's on the um, tape? 
I don't think anyone no. does now except the Herald on Sunday. The, the government certainly doesn't. I'm definitely trying to get a cup of tea date with Bryce, uh, the, the editor of the Herald on Sunday. No, the government will know. Yeah, well, exactly. they have an idea, but they don't. The only people who no, now have a knows. tape is, is, um, is the Herald. John, uh, yeah, and is John the Herald Key, on Sunday. And John Key. Uh, thank you, panel. Let's move on to prediction two. The market is predicting a 32% probability of Winston Peters returning to Parliament, and New Zealand First Party vote has moved up to 4.7%. Could Winston Peters really return from the political wilderness? John, Winston gave a speech in Singapore in September of this year, full of praise for China and acknowledged their ascendancy. This is not the xenophobic Peters of old. This is a preening cosmopolitan statesman in an otherwise charmless and drab election. Winston's back, isn't he? He's going to come back, and, and I, I regret that. Um, as treasurer in the 96 uh, Bolger government, he signed out more sales of New Zealand land to foreigners, mm -hmm. uh, thousands of hectares, mm -hmm. when he got voted in to say, uh, no, New Zealand first is um, against foreign ownership. So he's, he's, an, he's an anathema in this regard. Um, when you see his conference, there's 700 people there. Um, 200 over here are totally opposed to the 200 over here, but they don't right. appreciate it because he links them all with a myriad of policies that are that clash mm. all over the place. So so he's got this um, ability to tell Kiwis to go to hell in such a way that they look forward to it and they'll vote for him, you see. Right. And so it's just a... It's just a it's no, just nothing he says matters. Mm. I mean, that, what he says is completely irrelevant to his true beliefs, if indeed he has any. Mm. I mean, he goes to Singapore, he gives a speech about China, mm. because that's mm. what you do on that particular day at that particular conference. Similarly, if you go out to meet a Rotary Club in Howick, you, you attack Asian immigration. It's not, it's not personal for a mafia boss like him. It's just business, right? Matthew, well, and he always yep. got on well okay. with Asia. You know, in 1997, as Deputy Prime Minister, mm. Jim Bolger sent Winston Peters to the handover of Hong Kong to the mm, Chinese. Right, and he did a very right. good job yep. as a diplomat. Yep. As, as, as foreign minister, he loved Asia. Mm. He's very fond of Asia and the Asian people. Mm. While, while Winston was cleared by three separate investigations into party donations, the perception still remains that while no, he wasn't, wasn't cleared what, what, he wasn't cleared at all the, oh, he was the, cleared the, on the potential yep, exactly. for fraud yeah, 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 under yeah. The, by the serious the, fraud office the perception yeah. still remains that while winston was decrying the influence of mm. money in politics he was taking massive donations yeah. have the public forgiven him or just missed him yeah but, uh, but look the public don't have to forgive him um 90 95 percent of new zealanders no, don't trust him. Crook. Yeah. right right so he only, he only needs to pitch for around 5%. Now, that's mm. not a lot of people. And, and so on our radio show, um, when, when, we, when we say, hey, look, the Privileges Committee found you to be a crook, Winston, um, his, his supporters ring up and say, well, he might be a crook, but we still love him and he's our crook. <laughs> but he's our crook. <laughs> yeah. He's our yeah. crook. <laughs> that's yeah. what they right. say. Yeah. Well, have, have they missed him or have they or have Oh, there's him? a lot of people who, you know, the bewildered and the deranged um, and the, you know, profoundly racist and especially the elderly racist who just adore him that's mm. true um, but you know he lied about um, the money that was being given to him by Owen Glenn he lied mm. about how he obtained it it's quite clear that it was he personally obtained it from Owen Glenn um, Bob Jones. He, he lied consistently he said in 2005 he wouldn't you know take a yep. ministerial portfolio yep. the balls yep. obviously took one yep. he lied in 1996 when he mm. said he wouldn't go into um, government with the national mm. party he did surely uh, you know enough people remember this um, so I find it difficult to believe there's a whole lot of people who haven't voted for him before and all of a sudden we'll vote for him for the first time quick, this quick time. Quick question to both of you. If the, what, don't you think, though, there's an element uh, there, Matthew? Uh, you know, democracy is a little bit like a sausage. You don't really see what goes... You don't like to see what goes into it, but you like the, the, the flavour afterwards. He has sort of done some maybe, you know... The question all things in the background, but many many parties do these sorts of things. Where oh they no 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 no! You think he's he, another level? He is completely in a different category from all from other politicians. Party? He sells policy for money. He lies. I mean, he stole money for his election campaign um, in in two thousand and five. You know, the pledge card. Um, Labor did the pledge card. He did done, done a similar thing. He never repaid that money. He said he put it into a trust for Susan Couch, the woman, that's the, right, the that's victim right. of crime. Um, there's been no distributions to her from that trust. If, Everything he says is a lie. If the, if, if the perception is that Winston is close to 5%, and with a strong performance in tomorrow's minor party leaders debate, which you know we can pull out, could he take older National Party supporters who don't want to sell assets and are distrustful of a yeah, Bresky yeah, government? Yeah. you think that's where yeah, it's going to go? Look, um, um, savvy, um, savvy National voters yep. know where to go. Yep. What will happen is, is that a number of people, to send a message to John knowing that he's crossing the finish line, mm -hmm. right? 
that he will be the king. The, he will be the kingmaker, yep. not not Winston or anybody else. He'll cross the line, but they'll want to send a message to him. Rather than voting Labour, rather than voting uh, to the left or yep. whatever, they'll send a message through Winston because Winston's the man right. that, that will be able to sort of send him their yep. messages. Right? Yep. And that's not, that's keeping faith with themselves. Sure, sure, so, sure. So, so he, will, he will get there for that reason. If, and if, yep. that, if that yep. happens, yep. I don't think it will. Hmm. But if it does happen, then I think that will mean that Phil Goff will be the Prime Minister. Um, well, what great especially, news. Especially, what wonderful news. especially um, in the context <laughs> Of a two percent or so for the Mana Party, twelve uh, percent for for the Greens. I think a Phil Goff Green, um, Winston Peters, um, Hone Harawera, so, so Annette so, so, Sykes, so, John Minto, Sue Bradford, Government. If, what, what, what you well, 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 look. If, if Labor yeah. holds the thirty, uh, the Greens get twelve. Yep. Uh, you get to forty-two. Winston gets mm. five. Mm -hmm. You have forty-seven. Yep. Virtually there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, it'd be a strange if, if government. The, if the, if the, but, if the well, it'd probably be a minority government, wouldn't it? Uh, with the market predicting a thirty-two percent probability of Peters returning to Parliament, would you buy that because you think he's over the threshold, or you're going to short it? Would you short it? No, I'd short it. I'd sell it. Really? He got four point oh seven percent of the vote at the last election. Um, a lot of those people have died subsequently, given the very um, high number of voters he gets that are people who are senile in their 80s. Yes. Um, and I just don't believe there's tens of... It's a buy. I don't believe there's tens of... It's a buy. It's an absolute buy. There's not tens, here, there's not tens of thousands family. of people out no, there who are suddenly going to vote for that crook who haven't voted yeah, for him No, no, before. he's voting with his heart yes. there, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, rather yeah, than his yeah, head. No, I regret the surge. But um, you can see it happening, the momentum's you? happening, yeah, 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 and, um, yeah, yeah. and there's nothing out there to stop this rise of the Greens at the expense of uh, yep. Labour. But so there's only one, there's only one person Vehicle. coming through the middle yep. that is deemed to be a safe pair of hands yep. in the That's hands Winston. of those. Sure, <laughs> sure. Um, Which are portfolio you, are you, you gonna, think? Are you Which portfolio be... this time? Do you think he'll try and be Minister of Justice? Bye. <laughs> it's a bye. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a bye, isn't it? It's a bye. He's never been Minister. Come on, come on. It's a bye. No, it's a short. You're not going to make any money on that. Thank you, panel. <laughs> Moving on to prediction three. I predict stock have opened for the next leader of the Labour Party. Is the market being too hasty with Goss demise? Or will David Cunliffe at 40% probability be the next leader? John, as someone once described as the next leader of the Labour Party, you more than anyone know what a death sentence that tagline means. If Labour lose, if, what does Phil do and what does his caucus do? Oh, no, um, Phil is obliged to go. The timing of when he goes mm. will be interesting. Okay. Is it dependent on the vote, though? I mean, if he, if he gets uh, over 30%, he hasn't done that bad, has No, it? no, no, he's gone. Um, and the reason why he's yep. gone, gone is for the same reason as they took out Mike Moore. Um, Mike, Mike Moore deserved another shot. Yep. Uh, no, no, the powers that be that put him there. The Labour Party coven? That put him there, took him out. Yep. So, um, Goff was there to hold the poison chalice after nine years, a decade of Labour. Yep. It was always going to be a big ass for him to get back up. Mm -hmm. In the event that he does not deliver yep. on the 26th of November, his time is gone. Right. So, uh, is it the first uh, caucus after uh, the election? Um, I don't know. Sure. I suspect it will be the February. Okay. I okay. Think it'll be the February because one. they're going to need the summer to the, work out what's going to happen. Well, the, cork, the, the numbers have been done right now as we right. speak, uh, because around about one third of the present caucus uh, are not out there on the hustings, uh, driving the Labour campaign forward right. as they should, because they're getting ready to assert their sure, dominance sure. Uh, after it. So, so Phil um, is gone. The next question is, how does this caucus deal with who's there? Who's there able yep. to take over? Yep. Well, uh, Cunliffe is in the, in the frame for another reason than. There's no one else. It's a very poor list. They brought very poor talent in um, coming into this election in yep. 2011, if you look at the way they've numbered it out. Yeah. Uh, they need a, a major clean out in regards That's to That's the tragedy list. of the Labour Party, mm. that list is, is a terrible mm. shame. Uh, when National had its um, disaster 2002, they gutted. It, it, they they gutted. gutted, but they got rid of a lot of Deadwood yeah, and they yeah. got Don Brash, John Key, and Judith Collins, which were new yep. MPs at that yep. time, yep. have been successful into the party. In this, yeah, they're going to lose people like Stuart Nash, they're going to lose Kelvin Davis, they're going to not have people like Deborah uh, Mahuta Coyle, yeah, 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 um, yeah, yeah. and they're going to have these absolute old school hacks like Darian Fenton and Leander Zell and Ruth Dyson and H. Ross, where they're all still going to be there. So um, Labor's got some terrible decisions ahead of it. I think what Phil Goff should do is try and, you know, when, assuming he, he doesn't win the election on election night, um, I, I think he should take control of the situation. And mm. the guy whose history he should read is Michael Howard, who was leader of the Tories in the UK, and they kept losing to Tony Blair in mm. the same way that mm. Labor keeps losing to, to John Key. And 
what he did is he, he announced that he was leaving, but he said, I'm going to stay as leader for six months and that will allow the party to have a decent think about this because I really don't think it's in Labour's interest to sort of hand over to Cunliffe a week after the election because I, I don't believe that he's going to be any better than, um, than Goff. Now, through the Michael Howard process that he set up for his party, guess who came through? Someone no one had heard of, which was David Cameron, who then went and won the election. If Labour is uh, hurt by a sub-30% party vote, let, let's mm. say they get under 30%, that will cull many on the list and leave the unions as the largest faction. Doesn't that increase Andrew's, uh, Andrew Little's chances then? Uh, yes, uh, and probably under the scenario of outline, unfortunately for those on the right of the Labour Party, it would help Andrew Little have given six months to get established. Mm. Um, look, I don't like to downplay him. I don't think anything of him at all, right? I just, I just see him as a Wellington-based um, union boss, right? No surprises but, uh, there. But a lot of, you consider most people but, but, a bit like. But a lot of people um, in the Labour Party, they devalued um, Don Brash. They just said, oh, he's a Wellington-based captain of capitalism. Mm, mm. And actually, it was the right-wing captain of capitalism who restored national. Maybe it does need tell you, a left-wing union tell you boss for Labour. No, 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 I'll tell you who the bolter will be. It will be David Shearer. Uh, and he, he's a bolter for a whole range of re reasons. Bolter uh, in terms of what? So well, point. coming straight through the right, pack. Right, right, right. Okay, so he can come straight through the pack. And, and why um, he's preferred is, is that he's uh, very savvy across a whole range of policy areas. He's uh, very articulate. Um, he's the sort of middle, seen as a middleman New Zealander. He's a wonderful Philip to a um, to a John Key. Right. He, he, he hasn't got the nasty or the smarmy. Yeah, or the yeah, he's highly yeah, yeah. pragmatic. He's I mean, one pragmatic. of the things that yeah, the right so, have yeah. tried to attack him for during the by-election campaign is when he was working for the United Nations that's in right. Iraq, he yep. said, look, we really should be using mercenaries, private, 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 private armies. So right, the right wing right. said, ah, Labour's got a candidate who leads in the privatisation of the defence force, yeah, yeah, which, yeah. you know, it was a nice line. But that does mean he's pragmatic. I think he would be the best candidate for Labour. Mm -hmm. um, his background is interesting. Mm -hmm. he's, got, he's globally sophisticated through the UN system, mm -hmm. whereas John mm -hmm. Key's sophistication comes through the banks, but that's kind of appropriate, mm -hmm. given the two yeah. parties. Um, but I don't think that the unions like him. Mm -hmm. I don't think Rainbow likes him. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, well, he's I can't married see... married with children. Uh, he's married um, with children. And I can't how, see his how, sisterhood how, liking how, him how either because of his relationship with How are the factions within Labour? I mean, you, you, you mm, understand yeah. the factionalised nature. Yeah. How, how are they going to see the leadership? No, there, the there, there could be a compromise. You're saying he's the compromise candidate. So what often happens is, is that you get two strong contenders out of mm. two strong factions, uh, and they know they're going to rip one another apart. Mm. Uh, mm. So, so, it's, so it's can you can you rule the aftermath of the win? Mm. Uh, and often that's when a bolter comes through the right, middle right. and a compromise ca sure. candidate Look, yeah, she, crystallizes she, everything. And Shearer mm. is the guy mm. that sort of um, more lefty-leaning nat vote, national voters would vote for, right. just as John Key mm. is the guy that more right would yeah. when Labour yeah. voters yeah. would vote. Yeah. Shearer is the one if Labour is serious. Okay, that's why she, I don't okay, think okay, there's who, no who, chance of who, getting who, who's for the that deputy? reason. Who's the deputy? Well, look, given the way the party thinks, mm. uh, they have to pick a Sheila, probably. Okay. <laughs> so it'd have to be a woman somewhere in, in that mix, I suspect. Who that, who that would be, I, I, I don't know anymore. Well, Marion but, Street's a former president of their party. Yeah. Um, she, but that would be a back... If, you, if you're going to move forward with someone like well, Sheila, no, because that's she's, a backward Well, no, Shearer's the front man, yeah. and she's the deputy. Jacinda is deputy? deputy? Well, she, no, she's too young, I'd mm. say. But um, Marion Street is um, former president of the party. Yeah. She's popular with Rainbow, she's popular with the unions, um, she's, but she she's popular wear, with the sisterhood, but, but, and she knows yeah. she will never be the leader, yeah. so she'd be a good yeah, deputy. The, the, the beautiful thing about um, Marianne is she doesn't wear her sexuality on her sleeve, okay? And so, and so as a concept, it's not, it doesn't drive her politics. Mm. Uh, uh, what drives her politics is her social conscience. Mm. So she, she is uh, a very good possibility mm. as, a, as a deputy, a very good uh, welder together of some of the factions that uh, but would, is, would, is, would it be the new blood necessary to win 2014? You would see, we know that 20, 2011 to 2014 in this country is going to be tough, three right. year period. Yep. And we know that this Prime Minister um, hopefully won't have the calamities that have safeguarded him from a major inspection. <laughs> the, the other thing River. for Labour is they haven't rejuvenated at this general election, but hopefully for them, people like Mallard will step down, even Dizelle, Dyson, and they get some by-elections, get some talent in with, that way. With the market predicting David Cunliffe at 40% probability of being the next leader of the Labour Party, would you buy because no one else is with the profile? Or short because the Labour Party factions always kill the front line? Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd short. I'd, I'd, get, I'd dump all stock in Cunliffe. Um, 
I've probably dumped them all, though, because they all have end dates of them of some time next year. And I think Phil Goff has, done, has run a good campaign. Mm. He looks like a plausible prime minister mm. uh, to some extent. Yeah. Um, they've run good ads. They've got some policies. And I think that it's his responsibility to hang on for six months at least. Your thoughts? Oh, you know, no, I, I wouldn't bet on that mob at this yeah, particular yeah. point in yeah. time. Yeah. Um, y y you've got to wait till the dust settles uh, after the 26th of November. And then, then you'll see uh, what players are available to play the game. Yeah. Once you see that, you can then you can then have a, a more informed conversation. Thank you, panel. Let's wrap the show with final prediction. John, your final prediction tonight is uh, what what you'll see is uh, what we've already said. Winston Peters will surge back. Yes. Yeah, and uh, Mana will go. Uh, well, I think we'll put, I'm picking Mana to go to possibly three. At three seats, percent, they get four seats. four MPs. Yeah. Oh no, no I'm, I'm three yep. MPs. I'm picking on, on okay. numbers on yep. numbers. Yeah. Um, and that's because a lot of people that have seen Hune as uh, a Māori mm. radical only will, uh, are now starting to understand that there is uh, a Minto available mm. in, in the frame and a, and a Bradford. Yeah, and, 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 and yeah, he's a good yeah. lady. He certainly, yeah. certainly schooled Matthew Hooten on this show a couple of weeks ago. And Minto, Min, Minto um, you know, love him or hate him, he's consistent yep. at, at great sacrifice to his family and himself. Your final uh, prediction tonight? Uh, my final prediction is that New Zealand First will get fewer than the 95,356 oh, votes it got last time. Yep. I think um, of those 95,356, good 20,000 are dead, and I don't think there's new voters coming in. Uh, you're going to kill the dream? Um, th I think there'll be a uh, National Act, Green, United <laughs> Future, <laughs> God, whoever, everyone but Labour um, government. Everyone but uh, Labour. Uh, thank you, John. Thank you, Matthew, to my final prediction. Uh, today's uh, digi poll showing uh, to Uraroa Flabble at 56% to Annette Sykes 22% in the electorate of Wairiki should be put in context. It was taken shortly after Sykes' candidacy was announced, and it's a 400 landline poll from the Māori electorate role in an electorate that has few landlines and deep poverty. So in context... Annette Sykes has 22% support, even when her main voter support base aren't included in the poll. Other to win Wariki at 30% uh, probability is still a buy. Tomorrow night, I am joined by Materia Toure and Jacinda Ardern. Follow me on my Citizen Bomber Twitter and Facebook account for all my latest election updates. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you again tomorrow, 7pm on iPredict Election 2011, exclusively on Stratus TV. Until then, get trading.